This case is about Russell Maurice Johnson, who you may know as the Bedroom Strangler. Not only is he Canadian serial killer, he's also a rapist that was actually convicted for at least three and murders in the 1970s. This video contains graphic information and there are triggers. If any of these are triggers for you, please click out of the video, take care of yourself, and I will see you in the next one. This video is for educational and entertainment purposes only. I mean, no disrespect to anybody that I speak about in these videos. In the span of four years, Russell will go on to and strangle at least seven women in the London and Guelph, Ontario areas. And then he would also go on to non-fatally assault 11 others. 30-year-old Russell was from Guelph, Ontario. He was a big athletic man. He had once been employed as a bouncer. He had also formerly been a patient at the psychiatric hospital in London, Ontario, where he had been deemed to be a compulsive sexual deviant. So what do we know about Russell? He used to be a store clerk for Ford. He used to be an avid weightlifter. And remember this because it's important. In 1973, he literally started climbing up balconies like Spider-Man to get into someone's apartment by like an unsecured door or window. We're not talking just break and enter. No, what Russell was doing was he would go into a woman's bedroom, stand over top of her and just watch her sleep. Women were reported waking up to like some random dude hovering over top of them. And then so when they wake up, he bulls. Some ladies even reported that when they woke up in the morning, it had been rearranged. But, but wait, does that mean they went back to sleep? Russell actually like bzz, bzz, uh, some lady's apartment and he's like, yeah, I, I'm the London police. So you have to, you have to come down. You have to let me in. But the woman that he buzzed got on the phone. Bring, bring, bring. Hi, please. Is it you standing outside my door? No? Okay, thank you. Bye. He just like would take off before the police actually came and showed up. He stalked these women. He laid outside in the bushes and like watched up into the apartment to see when the lights would go out because then in his mind, they're asleep. There were times when he actually essayed these women and then suffocated them with a pillow. Diane Weiss was only 23 years old when her body was found. On New Year's Eve in 1974 by her fiance who had literally just proposed the night before. She had been strangled with her bra and her hands tied behind her back with her pantyhose and it was later revealed that she had been after her life had been taken. Guelph police offered a $5,000 reward. They were also looking for a dark four-door Buick that had been spotted literally behind her apartment building that same morning. At that time, he was visiting his father who lived in Guelph. Russell actually knew Diane. She was friends with his ex-wife who lived in the same apartment building. Luella Jean Georgia was also only 23 years old when she was taken in April of 1977. Russell had just like right up four stories, forced his way into her apartment and he did not take his time with her. He raped and then murdered her right away. Donna Velpin was only 22 when she was strangled to death in 1977. But get this part, she lived directly upstairs from Russell. Most killers end up getting sloppy and end up getting caught. Well, Russell did the same thing. He actually and strangled three ladies that he had left for dead. They were actually able to identify him. So I was kind of impressed by this part. His last victim, Donna Velbloom, they actually were able to arrest him two weeks right after her murder. Russell ended up being charged with three murders, Diane, Luella, and Donna. But what really bothers me about this case is that in 1969, he actually went to the London Psychiatric Hospital in Ontario, walked in and said, I'm having these urges. This is what I want to do. Can someone please help me? Doctors actually dubbed him as a sexual deviant and sent him on his merry little way. Not only in 1969 when he was at the London psych, but during trial, 
Russell actually claimed to have uncontrollable sexual urges to rape and kill. Russell admitted to the three murders of Diane, Luella, and Donna, but then he also offered up information on all of his other victims that the police weren't even aware of. But at trial, he pled not guilty, and he was found not guilty by reason of insanity because he had the incapability to grasp the harshness of his crimes. And then he was sent to Oak Ridge Psychiatric Hospital in Penetanguishene, Ontario, indefinitely confined. He's gonna get high, so high. Side note, Russell was chemically castrated. Yes, I googled chemical castration. Don't do it. So you take these drugs, to lower your testosterone levels, to lower, to lower your libido. This, this is what this is for. The average person thinks chemical castration, he can't hurt anyone anymore. These drugs that they're being given actually only work in 66% of the patients that take them. Fun fact, if you're taking the medication for an extended period of time, then those urges kind of creep back up. Russell actually petitioned every single year to be moved from Oak Ridge to Brockville. Brockville was uh, medium security and Oak Ridge was maximum security. There were less restrictions at Brockville. Brockville was also a psychiatric ward that housed both male and female patients. His petitions are denied every single year. What is it that us as women that are going out on the street, what should we be looking for? What are the flags? What are the what are the signs? The next serial killer could be the guy next door. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I personally think that anybody could be a serial killer. Please go lock your doors and lock your windows. Look over your shoulder. Check your back seat. Love you. See you in the next one.